delighted to be here. Um, it's a great privilege to be interviewed at length and be allowed onto a little soapbox and give people my ideas. Um, my name is Nicole Elliott. I have been a professional trader, foreign exchange, interest rates, derivatives, futures markets uh, for, oh gosh, 32 years now. Um, and I love it. I absolutely love markets. It's the best point of my day when I'm sitting around with my charts and just trying to work out what I'm going to do, what my game plan is and how I'm going to get going. Um, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. I know I have all the pieces, but I don't know what the picture's going to be like. That is the challenge, and that's what is just such fun. Cup of coffee in the morning. In the olden days, we used to be allowed to smoke in the dealing room as well. Coffee and a cigarette, and off I go with my charts. It's just brilliant. And I look at hundreds and hundreds of charts every day, and that's my discipline, just to make sure that I haven't missed anything obvious because they're always changing. There are always subtle differences in some, huge moves in others, and you've got to try and work out which is the leader and which is the laggard. And what you want to be doing when you're trading is buying the one that's appreciating the fastest, and against that, selling the one that is depreciating either the fastest or the steadiest. It's a slightly different equation. On the way up and the way down, they're slightly different. Uh, dynamics that you've got to take into consideration. And that's what I do. It's all based on technical analysis, which is the study of price patterns, historical prices, uh, different uh, ways of charting these, different oscillators that we might use, things like that. Um, and it is a body of knowledge, there's no doubt about it. It's well documented. In fact, it's much older than people think. Uh, the first known use uh, of candlestick charts was in Japan in the mid-18th century. And they were using it then on the rice futures market. Already then we had futures, we had derivatives, we had these dangerous things as the Fed likes to classify them. I mean, you know, Chicago was built on the derivatives markets, but um, they like to put that, forget that for the time being, and they just think all derivatives are bad, um, and that safe banking is good. I mean, the idea of, anyway, that's another story. Um, but yes, uh, rice futures contracts in Japan, and they were using candlesticks. As a Westerner, we didn't start off using candles. We used bar charts, uh, which was widely used in Europe and in the United States, uh, on and off since the sort of mid-1920s. Um, and then when I saw the candles, that was it. I was a complete convert. Off I went. Um, so that's where, where charting really started. And then it was big, as I say, particularly in the stock market. Um, in the 1920s, of course, when something is booming, everyone wants a piece of the action. They're all trying to get an edge. Uh, and definitely, in my mind, charting is brilliant for timing. OK, so you, you said you got into it 32 years ago, I think. Mean. What, what was your sort of key learning from the early days? Well, I was thrown in at the deep end, actually. I never thought I'd be a banker, and I never thought I'd be a chartist. And I, mean, it was, um, I was a product of my time, very much. I went uh, to the London School of Economics and graduated just as Mrs Thatcher came to power. And there was soaring unemployment. And as a graduate with uh, precious little practical experience in, in, in work, I was among the most unemployable of all. Um, until quite by chance I was offered this job in a brand new department which was going to trade deri derivatives, um, financial derivatives. Already in London we were well accustomed to commodity futures and all the rest of it. Um, and they were just going to implement uh, financial futures. And that's how I started. Um, and I just understood it. I just got it. It just made sense to me right from day one. I had the most two lovely Scottish bosses. They were just uh, brilliant, brilliant people who gave me a sort of an informal apprenticeship, really. Um, and 
it was just, right, you're going to be our chartist. We need to know about charts because people in Chicago use these all the time. It's not a sort of traditional banking uh, methodology, but we're going to be at the cutting edge of all things uh, derivative. And that's how I started. I went then to the London Stock Exchange um, and we called on favours uh, of people who were our counterparties and who, who used our bank as, as, as bankers and for loans and things like that. Um, and so I went down to one of the uh, boxes, as they were, the market makers had boxes. I went down to one of the boxes of the gilt market makers and learnt. Then I went uh, many times to New York uh, and to Chicago and again called on favours with people saw how they were working, they taught me. Um, everyone very generous in those days, I think, too. It wasn't this sort of uh, trying to hang on to information to keep uh, yourself one step ahead of the competition. It was very much more inclusive um, and keen to help young people starting. As well as that, I'd say there were some books that I read that were just brilliant. One of the classics of the time is Edwards and McGee, um, and it's very, very old and out of date now, but as soon as I read that, I knew, I knew exactly what they were talking about. The other one, which is absolutely brilliant, and it's short and easy to read, is um, titled Reminiscences of a Stock Operator, and he was one of the most successful uh, speculators ever, an American chap. Very colorful life, there's a new book out uh, about him, I would urge people to read that too. It's really good fun read and it's all about probability, risk taking, being crushed, losing a fortune, picking yourself up again and sorting yourself out, dusting yourself down. Um, and the combination of the rigour of technical analysis and the understanding of betting, gaming, gambling, risk, those are the two keys things that I, I took with me and, and have held me in very good stead over a very long time. Um, and so I'd say that that, that that really was my introduction, the combination of the rigour and the understanding of risk. Okay. <clears throat> and do you think, I mean, has your trading style changed since those early days then, with the advent of technology and the like? Very much so. I mean, I used to actually do the charts by hand. We had posters around the dealing room and I used to update them in the morning. We also used to have chart books that we used to get on a weekly basis. Um, there was an English one and uh, a US version. Um, again, we used to update those manually every day. But one thing it has taught me is to work very, very quickly and to almost flip through, you know, like a series of stills for a comic or something or other, where you, you flip the pages. Um, and you see the jarring movements and where things don't fit. Uh, very much that idea is carried forward from all those times ago. And so still today, um, as I say, I'll flip through my charts now on screen rather than on paper, but I'll flip through a good 200 charts in less than 15 minutes. And it's this business of seeing the ones that jar and the faster you do it, the more obvious it is, the, the, the jarring ones. Then you go back to them and, and work further. Um, computers have just been brilliant. Um, again, when I started, we were doing proper arbitrage, and uh, I used to use a Hewlett Packard handheld, <laughs> clever calculator to work out all these strips of interest rate futures that I had to work out and whether it was worth me lending in the cash market and covering myself in the futures or not. Now, of course, all of that is done on a you know one button Bloomberg kind of thing. So, I mean, the technology is just fantastic nowadays, and the the, the back testing that you can do is, is, is I mean, absolutely unheard of. Um, in, as I say, in the olden days, people used to get all these poor kind of interns uh, to do everything manually. Um, one of the charting methods that I like very much is called cloud theory, Ichimoku, it's a Japanese method um, developed in the 1960s in Japan, so obviously pre uh, personal computing times um, and this chap swore all these uh, apprentices to secrecy and they just I think I don't think they even had calculators they had abacuses or something like that and they just back tested all these moving averages on 
hundreds of different Japanese stocks, equities, um, really, you know, said so, so, yeah, I think computers are just fantastic and it has opened up this world to people, uh, not just to laymen, but people who want to do it on a part-time basis because you don't have to spend so much time. You've got a lot of good packages that will help you to sort things out. So I think that is the real difference from when I started is the computer power.